right, so now you know all about Griffin, but now we got to tackle the huge topic of the testing grounds, and we've got the recurring Stefan Jawinski with us, but also JC Frenet, game designer, here today to speak oh. on that behalf, on that topic. So how are you today, JC? I'm pretty good. Yourself? I'm doing excellent. I know that we've got a lot to cover, so uh, let's let's get right into it. But before we do, actually, um, a little bit of a recap of what Testing Grounds is. Uh, and Clarissa, if you don't mind getting to it, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so Testing Grounds is our public test where we give you changes to try out before it goes live in-game. Uh, what's really nice about this is that it's not a separate server that you need to download. It's just right in the game. Uh, you'll see it on the event front in the world map, and it's available on all platforms, not just one. Uh, this also allows for your regular progression, so you won't be losing any while you do the tests. Uh, the testing grounds will be live on December 10th, and it will be for a week until the 17th. Times may change, but we will communicate uh, if there are any changes. And we will be looking through your feedback on our social channels, on Reddit, and most importantly, through a survey that we will be sending out. And based on your feedback, it will determine whether these changes will go live right away or if it will need further development. But like I said, we will communicate on when those changes will go live. So make sure you play some testing grounds because your feedback is very, very important in this phase. Yeah, that is correct. And uh, talking about this new phase, let's get right into it. Uh, Stefan, I don't know if you want to start us off uh, and just give us the high level of what this phase entails and the heroes, obviously, that you could see on the screen now and uh, what the objective is. Absolutely. Uh, sure. As you see on the screen, there's a Warden, Peacekeeper, Nobushi, and Shigoki. These are the characters that you're going to be able to play on the Testing Ground event front. Uh, and, and as Clarissa has pointed out, uh, if you play them in the event front, they're going to be these new changes that we're going to talk about today. If you play them in any other normal matchmaking, it's going to be the regular stuff. So think of this as like a vision into the future, basically. A vision that you will help us shape. So so thank you for your time. That was, that was, that was uh, beautifully said. I just had to say it. Thanks, I thanks. Really I hadn't rehearsed that at all, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and basically what we're trying to do with these heroes is 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 bring up their viability. We'll kind of break down like on a character by character basis, uh, where are they weak in their kit? What are we trying to, to fix up with each of them? Uh, and in a few cases, such as like some of the Shigoki bits, we'll talk about what parts we think are frustrating and, and how we're trying to address that. Awesome. Well, let's, let's get right into it, JC. Uh, I guess we'll start off with the Warden. Yeah, so, uh, so for Warden, we're trying to target uh, like as the previous slide mentioned, uh, we try we're trying to get to give every hero kind of like two roles at least, so that they can actually perform quite much better in like high level tournaments. Uh, because what we've really noticed and what we've, what we've been seeing a lot is that heroes that have a single niche generally are not picked because they're not really viable for tournaments. So for Warden, what we're going to be doing is we're trying to focus on his offensive one v one and also something we call offensive one v x, which is basically when you're outnumbered. Uh, but using offensive tools to defend yourself instead of being overly defensive. Uh, with Warden, you're supposed to be capturing points with your strong offense. You're going to defend points as well with your pretty strong offense. And we're also looking to address a bit of fairness and frustration stuff uh, that we've been seeing over the over the past few months and years. So just to make sure everything is a bit more fair. So uh, with Warden, we're changing three modes. We're addressing Shoulder Bash. We're addressing his heavy attacks, so both openers and finishers. And we're also touching a little bit on his zone attack. So let's get into it. Okay, so Shoulder Bash. So first of all, uh, he can no longer access it from back dodge. Uh, that's a big change that's been requested by a lot of players. It reduces frustration, makes it a lot better to fight against him. Uh, so that's good. Uh, he always has a little bit of static movement when you faint Shoulder Bash. So he's gonna, always going to move a little bit when you faint uh, to help make sure that you're able to do faint to guard break after a lot of the options we're giving him. Uh, he no longer has that little bit of extra movement when you faint the fully charged version. Uh, a lot of the times what would happen is uh, you would do a fully charged shoulder bash, you would faint, and then for just like a tiny, tiny little bit in the beginning, uh, he would move forward a bit. Uh, that, make it, that made it a little bit hard sometimes to get punishes off of it. Uh, and it was frustrating for some players who felt that, uh, well, you know, that my, my opponent was able to like see what I was doing, react and faint. So this way, like, it's super good. We don't have any problem with that. And then last but not least, uh, Shoulder Bash can now be accessed after any of Warden's sword attacks. 
Uh, so we have a bit of video for this. Uh, essentially, you can do zone attack into shoulder bash now. You can do, uh, what's coming up? We can do, okay, yeah. So we can do a uh, Death's Valiant Breakthrough, so dodge for it heavy into shoulder bash. We can do his uh, sprint attack, lock, shoulder bash. And last but not least, we can do neutral, uh, we, get, we have neutral heavy into shoulder bash. And then we have a final thing here where is uh, also from his heavy finishers, right? So you go heavy into heavy finisher into shoulder bash. We have a little sneak peek of something else. So that's pretty cool. So that's the idea. Uh, basically, Warren with this is able to go into like any of his moves except shoulder bash, goes into shoulder bash, which uh, gives him a lot of really, really like potential offense. You not you don't really have to stop. You don't really have to rely on your lights all the time. Uh, whenever you throw, uh, if you throw out a heavy, you can go into shoulder bash. You can go uh, like guard break, heavy into shoulder bash. So all those little options that he has makes him a lot stronger offensively to kind of offset the fact that uh, he lost a little bit of his offensive ability from shoulder bash from back dodge. Yeah, and a good point there is like, uh, so why those two things? It's like, uh, there's a lot of dead ends in the kit, as JC points out. Um, and we're trying to like kind of shore that up and be like, okay, so if you hit a heavy or if you hit a zone or whatever, we would like you to press another button, whatever that is. So shoulder bash is a great option for that. And then on the other side, like removing back dodge into shoulder bash uh, is good because if you watch uh, duels versus a warden who really knows how to play his or her class, uh, it can be quite a stalling, boring, uh, fishing for shoulder bash kind of deal. And uh, we're trying to say, okay, so a little worse in that scenario for Warden, but much better in uh, any other kind of normal fight that you'd see in Duel or, or Dominion especially. Yeah, his flow is so much better now with all of these changes. He can always flow back into whatever he's doing, so that's pretty strong. Okay, so next up we have heavy attacks changes. Uh, there's quite a few. Um, first, uh, his side heavy openers have slightly flatter trajectories uh, that makes him a little bit better in group fights. Like I was saying in 1VX, we want to improve his offensive 1VX ability. So you can, you should be able not to do like switch target side heavies, hit a bunch of people around you. You're going to be better. It also has uh, benefits in the lane. So your, your warden's going to be a bit more efficient in the lane with this. Uh, they also have increased range. So you're going to hit people from a little bit further away. Uh, and it, again, it, it, it promotes that uh, that aspect of defensive offense that we have, uh, where those attacks were only ever really used after a guard break beforehand. So that's a big difference there. Uh, all of his heavy finishers are, nine, nine, are, are now 900 milliseconds. So top was a thousand. Wait, Max, go back. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, his top heavy finisher used to be a thousand ms. Now it's 900, but his sides were 800 and now they're 900. And the reason we did that is now we can go into the video. Um, all of his heavy finishers are now unblockable, right? So basically, side heavy finishers are unblockable uh, at 900 milliseconds, so that gives them a lot of offense. You actually want to use them now in group fights, like we were saying before. So you can go, like, you can maybe do shoulder bash or heavy on one side of somebody, swap target heavy on somebody else, tag people, they just can't stay still and block whatever you do. They actually have to do something and forcing your opponent to actually act when they're around you in this manner is typically pretty strong because uh, it forces them to do something, and when they're doing something, they're not attacking you. So that's, that's the big idea behind that. Uh, the salary finishers also have flatter trajectories and have a little bit of extra movement during their startup. So again, like defensively, you can use them to uh, like switch target, step forward a little bit, hit somebody. You're going to be able to like hit them a little bit, like it's going to work much better than it used to, so that's pretty good. And then the last change we've done uh, is that all of his light attacks now chain to heavy finishers at 100 milliseconds during their recoveries. What this means is that you can you can always do light, fully buffer your heavy, and then if you think your opponent's going to back dodge or side dodge or whatever, you can do faint the guard break and it should always work, uh, which is the point here. We want to make sure this is consistent, that we don't have problems with this. When, oh, well, you know, like I do, there, you can always back dodge after a light our back roll actually, so that's that's one of the big changes there for this. So next up we have zone attack. Uh, so zone attack has two changes uh, on top of being chaining to shoulder bash. Now, um, zone attack's recovery is now 500 milliseconds down from a thousand. Uh, this is a big buff for group fights. Again, uh, like when we look at Warlord, for example, right? Warlord has very little recovery on his zone attack. Uh, this is kind of similar. 
And it also helps it so that you don't feel forced to constantly go into your chains afterwards. Beforehand, you would do zone attack. You, you really, really had to go into your heavy finishers. Because otherwise, you could get punished really hard. With this, it's a lot harder to get punished. So you can now just throw a zone attack at rent, like at, at, a, at a normal point if you want to just stop there, if you want the stamina for it or whatever. And it also has a bit of extra forward movement. So you can use it from further apart. You can do, again, switch target zone attack and be able to like like swap and go in between the opponents constantly. So that's pretty much it for uh, Warden. Uh, like, Stefan, what do you think uh, is going to be is going to happen to Warden with these changes? So kind of globally, I would think that Warden is going to be a little less uh, slow and stally in a 1v1 situation, which I think will slightly uh, hurt on duel, but there's really room, plenty of room for that to happen for Warden and still be fine. But on the other side, uh, with shoulder bash access as well as the unblockable heavies, is going to be much able to uh, be able to attack and continue sustained offense on a character. So I would say in a situation where you have a warden trying to hold a capture point, they could actually aggressively uh, fight down the opponent that's coming for them. And then the other stuff you've got for, for trajectories and, and in terms of when you're timing of coming back to recovery on zone, for example, uh, should allow you to be much more survivable in a group fight or multi-person kind of scenario. So I would really be excited to see, like, can a warden threaten uh, Centurion or Warmonger for their spot uh, on your roster? Uh, before, I would say probably not. And now it's like, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, so next up we have Peacekeeper. So uh, where are we going towards with Peacekeeper, Stefan? Peacekeeper is an interesting one as well. Uh, a little weak in 1v1 at this point and really not that useful in group fight scenarios uh, on live. And then Peacekeeper wants to get the bleed right now in a fight and then really try to press her advantage uh, using her enhanced lights. And while this is good, it's still easy to external block her. It's still easy to shut her down in a number of ways. And we're going to try to kind of pump that up. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see what we have. So uh, we're changing a couple of removes, or we we're doing some tweaks on all of our heavy attacks, uh, some tweaks on dagger cancel, on heavy finishers also specifically, and also on zone attack. So let's start with heavy attacks. So now all of our heavy attacks now deal an extra five damage uh, across the board baseline, including dodge attacks. So that means that the dodge attacks no longer do five plus deep gouge, you do 10 plus deep gouge. Uh, that puts her damage a little bit across above the curve, but being above the curve in this case is okay for Peacekeeper. Uh, she has to work a little bit harder to get her damage in. It'll let her do a bit more executions. So that, that should be that should really pump her up a little bit. We've been seeing that her numbers have been going really, really way down since the core combat update. So that should really, really help her out. Next up, we have uh, dagger cancel changes. Uh, so we have a video for this. So you can now cancel the recovery of dagger cancel with a dodge. Uh, at 333 milliseconds, that might seem like an odd number. Uh, the idea is that when you do this, you still don't have frame advantage in 1v1, but you can use it in 1vx scenarios, and it actually comes out faster than it was before the core combat update, right? Before combat, core combat update, it was coming out at 400. So now at 333, you can you can more comfortably do direct cancel on somebody, dodge, swap target, dodge for heavy, and like do a bunch of like. You can you can really see like peacekeeper going jumping back and forth between a bunch of opponents in group fights, uh, which is interesting. But the recovery time, if you don't cancel with a dodge, is unchanged, right? So we still want to keep that frame disadvantage in one v one, because with some of the the, the changes that are coming up that we'll see afterwards, uh, it, it we were like we didn't want her to become a bit too strong in those types of areas. So next up we have uh, heavy finishers. So heavy finishers, heavy finishers are not unblockable when you are locked on to an opponent that's bleeding. So we can see a video of this, uh, where we see Peacekeeper landing uh, uh, dagger again, so, and then going to a heavy finishers, right? So with those heavy finishers being uh, unblockable, it makes her, and it's like those heavy finishers become so strong and so scary, because out of heavy finishers, she has, she can dagger cancel, she can dodge, she can she can guard break, uh, she can let it rip, she can faint, she can do everything. Basically, she has every single option out of her heavy finishers, and so it makes this so you can't option select them. So it makes them it makes them very very strong. It makes them super scary. And on top of that, what's interesting is that all of those all of the outs that she has when you correctly read your opponent and you land something leads to more bleed, which in turn leads to 
going more towards heavy finishers again and again and again. So it kind of snowballs in that way. So that's really, really interesting for her. It gives her a bit more external pressure as well. So that's that's pretty good. I think so you still next, get your combo hit. Uh, yeah. After after. Yeah, you, you still get deep gouge, right? So if you let it rip, you go deep gouge, and you can go light into something else. So that's the interesting thing is that that's it. Every absolutely everything needs to bleed. So that's pretty good. Next up, we have zone attack. Uh, zone attack has been something that's been a bit of a, a contentious issue. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so now zone attack is enhanced like other zone attacks, and it also gives a heavy parry uh, when it's parried, like all like like I think all the zone attacks at this point except for the bash ones. Um, now we have another thing too. The second hit is unblockable when you're locked on to a bleeding opponent. Uh, so similarly to our heavy finishers, uh, you can go when your opponent is bleeding, you can do a zone attack, and then the second hit is unblockable. You can get mix ups. Which, which brings us to the rest of these changes. Uh, you now faint the second hit at the normal faint timing. Uh, this was done partially because uh, it makes it a bit more in line with stuff and it makes the mix-up work a little bit better, but also because if your opponent was bleeding, you would flicker unblockable and it looked really bad. So that, that was that was really, really like a, 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 a difficult issue with that. Uh, so now I also saw faints that you can saw the normal faint timing. So that's good. Uh, but it also now faints, soft faints to guard break and to dodge. So you can go zone, dodge, zone, guard break if somebody is trying to run away from your unblockable, for example. Uh, again, that second hit uh, cannot really be uh, option selected. So it gives her zone attack a lot more pressure and a bit more usability in group fights. Uh, it doesn't faint as quick as it used to, but it's still like a pretty potent tool. So that's pretty much it for Peacekeeper. Uh, there's one more thing I want to add. Yeah, so we have a bit of video uh, as to uh, what the uh, what happens with uh, Arizona Attack being unblockable and then all the options out of it. If Max plays the other videos. Yeah, so this is, that was like soft into guard break. Uh, we have Zone Attack going into guard break. Yeah, okay, so then we have, what else we have? Okay, perfect. Okay, so that's what we get then. Um, <laughs> I, I was sure we had the other ones, but it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, so that's it, that's it for zone attack. Um, so there's yes. one more thing. Yes, I love you, Max, by the way. Thank you. For yeah, yeah, that. we love you, Max. Like, <laughs> you're amazing. Uh, there's one last thing I want to add before we do the recap, because it's not in the slides. Uh, it's something that we did uh, quick, a little bit last second. Um, we changed the input on her deflect. So when you're deflecting left, right, or front, to a heavy attack instead of a light. Uh, the idea being that, uh, like, a lot of other characters have that. When you deflect, you do one button, and then if you deflect it, you would do your deflect, and if you didn't deflect, you do your dodge attack. So now you have that with, with Peacekeeper as well, so whenever you're dodging, just always hit heavy if you want to do something, and the right option is always going to come out. So that, that's pretty good. We can go into the recap now. So, Stefan, what do you think uh, is going to happen with Peacekeeper? I think it's going to be very interesting to see how she performs at this point. Um the game plan of get that bleed and then press your advantage is much stronger than it was before. Zone attack is going to have really interesting follow-ups, so there's unblockable or something to uh, dagger or guard break or whatever. Uh, she's going to have quite a lot of options that way. I would really like to see her hit that bleed and then pressure down opponents to the point where you're like, ah, yes, I want this assassin on my team. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool, too, because she synergizes really, really well with other bleed heroes like Shaman or Lubushi, right? Oh, that was going to be my line, but I forgot it, I guess. So <laughs> I've won two transitions today. <laughs> so yeah, Lubushi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Was Mike going to burn me there, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> I, let, I let yourself burn yourself there. Oh, that's All right. better. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so <laughs> Lubushi. Uh, used to be a super strong character uh, at the top of the top of the meta. Uh, we nerfed a bunch of her timings. Uh, that kind of hurt her. CCU, her damage ended up uh, at the board or slightly below for, for kind of the thing. So ends up not being uh, meta at all. Basically, what we want to do is try to make some of our mix-ups start to work. Some of our timings start to be a little more uh, beneficial towards her. Uh, so that she can really compete for can she take Kensei's job as, you know, chief leaner or a group fighter. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's look at what, we've, what we changes we've done. So we've done, uh, we've done a few changes to hidden stance, uh, also to her heavy finishers and the heavy stance hidden attack, uh, the hidden stance heavy attacks, rather. Uh, some changes to a zone attack, Cobra Strike, and Sidewinder. So let's look at that. 
Uh, so first up, hidden stats. Uh, it now costs 12 stamina to enter, to enter instead of 24. Uh, that's made to give her like a bit more, uh, a bit more, a bit better flow and a bit like you, it's not so stamina intensive to cancel your attacks and all these things. Uh, it gives her a bit more utility in one v one in the lane, in a bunch of different areas. So you should be able to go into hidden sense far more now, which is pretty interesting. Uh, next up, we have heavy finishers. So. Um, Max, we have a video for this. Uh, so basically now are her heavy finishers and the heavy attacks from Hidden Stance are now undodgeable, right? So this means that in a lot of the cases where you could go into kick, for example, you can go Hidden Stance to kick or you can go like kicking your chains or whatever, uh, you now have an actual proper mix-up with that those unblock undodgeable heavies, rather. So that's really, really strong. It gives her much better 1v1 potential. Uh, so that's pretty much the idea with, uh, behind that. It also helps in group fights. Uh, people that try to dodge like excessively around you, you can still tag them, so that's pretty good. Uh, next up, we have zone attack. Uh, zone attack. We also have a, we have a couple of videos for these, but uh, so zone attack. The, zone, the second hit of zone attack was kind of really underwhelming. Uh, there was no real reason to use it most of the time. You would faint it like pretty much all the time. So now that second hit can actually soft faint into a bunch of different options. It can soft faint into kick. It can soft faint into dodge. And it can also soft faint into her heavy finisher, right? So you have you have the utility of using it in a 1v1 where you have a mix-up with kick and undodgeable. You can use it in group fights as just dodging into somebody else. You can do a lot of different things. So that's really interesting with her. Uh, it makes her a lot more viable in the lane and in group fights and in 1v1 as well. So that's pretty interesting. And the uh, heavy finisher can be top left right as you like yeah, basically exactly yeah so it, it, you can't just go like what some pro players do when it, when it only comes from one side just blocking that side and side dodge or whatever so that's pretty good um we also adjusted our stamina cost so it used to be 40 stamina for the first hit and then nothing for the second now it's 20 for the first hit 20 for the second uh we'll see how this goes uh it might be a little bit strong but we'll see where we end up with this this and, is why uh, it's part of the testing grounds, correct? Exactly, right? That, that's there the interesting thing. We can, we can actually test this out without uh, breaking anything. That's pretty good. And then uh, the, the feint for the second hit uh, now costs 10 stamina. It used to cost nothing. Uh, there was a bit of some inconsistency there, so that we're trying to just make it a lot more consistent, more uh, predictable so that in the way that it works. Uh, next up, we have Cobra Strike. So Cobra Strike uh, now also changed the heavy finisher. Uh, that, that makes it so... Basically, what, what, what used to happen with Nobushi is... You would land a Cobra Strike, right? So dodge for a light or the same dodge light. And then your opponent would literally just roll away from you every single time. And there was nothing you could do. It was absolutely impossible to catch them up. So with this now going to heavy finisher, your opponent actually has to stay in place. Because if they try to run away, you can do your heavy finishers and, and tag them. Uh, which is pretty strong. It's really useful uh, in the fact that when you're fighting against a Nubushi, you actually have to respect her when she does whatever option she does now. So that's, that's actually pretty useful for her. Uh, and then, last but not least, I think, yeah, we have Sidewinder. So, somebody we have a video for this. Sidewinder also now changed to Heavy Finishers. So, uh, similarly to Cobra Strike, uh, you can you could roll away from every, every option she has. So, now you can just go into Heavy Finisher and tag people. Uh, it also creates an actual good mix-up with her kick, because she can go Sidewinder into kick. So, with this way, you can go Sidewinder into kick or Heavy Finisher if you're in a 1v1. Uh, have a little bit of a mix-up afterwards. Or uh, make sure at least that your opponent is going to see in place. And the other thing we did to uh, Sidewinder is that the timing, the, the chain timing options to all of her chains used to be at a static 500 milliseconds after the attack. So now what we did is uh, you can chain a little bit earlier at 400 milliseconds and you can also delay them up to 5. Uh, what this does is it gives her more utility in the lane. Uh, one of the problems that she had in the lane is that because her timings were so strict and so late, she had a hard time fighting off and contesting the lane uh, or defending the lane against other characters like uh, Conqueror, for example, or Kensei. Uh, have, they have like much better ways of controlling the lane. So with this, she should be able to come back into the lane and control it about, uh, a lot more to make her uh, much more viable in the lane. So that's it for Nobushi. Uh, Stefan, what do you expect is going to end up happening with Nobushi here? I think it's going to be very interesting. She's got uh, much more ability to lane and be safe in the lane, as you said. Um, she's got some ability to actually make her mix-ups work and, and threaten, you know, normal 1v1 or small group fight situation. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, you can't just straight up roll every time you see her go into hidden stance or, or after some of her other attacks. 
So there's going to be entire pieces of her kit that she never used that she will now attempt to use. Um, so I think that's going to be great. Uh, will she threaten for a Kensei spot? Will she go up to like JJ level? Where will she end up? We'll see. But as you said, she's got friends now with uh, shamans all over the board. Uh, PK is yeah. being thought about at this point. Uh, the synergy is there. Great. All right. And then uh, the, our last character we're going to be uh, looking at, who's the guy I dream about being every night, uh, Shigoki. <laughs> so uh, so we're targeting some things for Shigoki. Stefan, what do you tell us about it? Shigoki is a strange character. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not super effective in Dominion or high-level play, mostly. Uh, crushing uh, newer players and weaker players, uh, because that's what it does. Uh, so right now we're going to try to bring down frustration for full population uh, dual and Dominion type stuff. And at the same time, try to reduce the super polarizing matches of like Shigoki versus Conqueror, which is heavily uh, like, what can Shigoki do against Bash? Uh, nothing. Yeah. Uh, and on the other side, what do you do against a Shigoki if you're, I don't know, an Orochi or whatever, uh, and you don't have a melee, uh, and you're eating super armored uh, lights, hyper armored lights, unintrigable stance lights? Pick your turn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So uh, let's look at what we're gonna, what, what moves we're changing on Shigoki. Uh, so we're doing tweaks to his light attacks, to Demon Embrace, and we're giving him two new options. Uh, we're giving him a forward dodge attack and also a side dodge attack. So let's start up with light attacks. Uh, we have a little video for this. So his light attacks are no longer armored. They're still enhanced. They still have the of properties. But as you can see in this video, uh, he respects the core combat update from advantage rules. Uh, it also makes it so that you have to be a bit, like you, you, you have to be a little more smarter when you play with Shigoki and just not mash lights constantly and be able to trade all the time. Uh, we're expecting this to make him a lot less frustrating, and uh, it really, really like he, he suffers from it a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. He's still able to go into his offense. Uh, next up, we have Demon's Embrace. So Demon's Embrace, uh, we also have a video for this. Uh, we completely removed the armor from it. See, you can see here, like the warlord hits him super late into it. Part of the reason for that is that uh, it's, if I remember correctly from the data that, that we have seen, uh, that move is the single highest landing move in the entire game. The data seemed to show them like above 80% hit uh, like hit rate with it, which is incredibly high. Um, a big part of that is because it's armored, and then you could it's it's really really hard to to play against if you don't know exactly what option to use. You could do dodge attack into it, and then you would still trade, and it would still hit you, and it was super frustrating for a lot of players. So we removed it entirely. So now uh, you can still use it as a ganking tool. Your external, you do heavy to uh, demons embrace. You can still gank with it. Still good. But it's not as strong as it used to be in 1v1. So you can't really rely on it as much. It'll still land, but it won't be like as, as powerful as it was. Another thing we did is also we lowered the recovery to 1,500 milliseconds. Uh, it used to be 2,000. And on top of that, you regain the ability to block at 1,200 of this. So the, 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 the mismatch there a little bit is so that we don't want people to use Demon's Embrace nonstop. Like we see sometimes some Shigoki players doing. Uh, so the recovery is still a bit high. But being able to block at 1,200 makes it so that beforehand you had players that could roll away and then do a dodge forward heavy and still tag you or be out of stamina, do like like forward step heavy and still tag you out of it. With this, you'll be at least able to block whatever they do. So you're a bit more safe when you use it, but you can't just spam it constantly. Yeah, you'll get punished, but you won't be like insanely punished or exactly. extra punished or double yeah. punished in the case of armor into a, a hit in the recovery a second time. Yeah, that's it. So next up, we have new attacks. So uh, so now he has a dodge for it heavy. Uh, we have a little video for this. Uh, so dodge for it heavy basically uses what we had as a as sprint attack animation. Uh, it's not armored like sprint is. It's literally just a dodge for it heavy. Uh, it catches rolls really, really well. Uh, typically, from what we've seen, you can use it on reaction to somebody rolling and still catch them. So that's really strong. Uh, we know there's a little uh, known issue right now in the testing grounds that's going to be fixed when the character releases if we still do that, which is it doesn't execute right now, but it should. So just keep that in mind. It's a little bug that we're going to fix. Put it in uh, your surveys. Yeah, put it in your surveys. That's gonna be good. We're going to make sure we don't forget it. Uh, the other thing, too, is that it acts like a chain starter, right? So you can do dodge for it heavy into your heavy finishers and uh, have a lot of pressure out of that. That's pretty strong. And then uh, Shigoki's final change is he now has side dodge bashes. Basically, he uses his headbutt. 
Uh, so you can go into whenever somebody like attacks you, you can do side dodge hit, but it gives them an actual option against to, to deal against bashes, especially the fast acting bashes. Like uh, if you look at uh, Black Prior or Conqueror or Lawbringer, for example, uh, they won't be able to dodge out of it if you predict it. So it makes them a little bit easier to, to punish bashes. Uh, it also goes into his finishers, it acts as a chain starter. Basically, it's headbutt that you use in chains, but use it on a side dodge. Uh, it still does 37 of damage, all that stuff. So it's pretty strong. Uh, it's really, really useful. It's good so that because you can't really just roll away afterwards either, you can just do faint the guard breaking and catch people. And that's it. So it gives them a really, really powerful option to deal against bashes, uh, but that doesn't really guarantee damage. So it's pretty interesting for that. So that's it for Shigoki. So what do you think Stefan is going to end up uh, going on with Shigoki? Well, I think for sure it's going to be less frustrating for full pop players like that late uh losing its uninterruptible uh property is going to be quite good um i think on the other side we're going to see way less polarizing matchups so shigoki versus conk or bp or whatever something along those lines is not going to be completely hopeless for the shigoki and then same on the other side shigoki versus someone who doesn't have access to a move like that is not going to be hopeless for the other side so i'm really hoping to see shigoki not have you know dominate or dominated by mm -hmm. matches and more like kind of in the middle this is in the middle trust me i got a small scale there <laughs> this is the middle yeah i got it. all right yeah so that's it for the for the character we have in the testing grounds so uh mike Yes, that the first of all, that was awesome. Uh, a lot of information, and of course, uh, you know, this is this is a weak event, and I know that it seems like a lot of stuff, but obviously, if it's going to be in the future of the game, it's the reason why we go over it so extensively, or you guys do at least. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, again, it's so important for you guys to be a part of the testing grounds and send your feedback because um, obviously, uh, it's folks like JC and Stefan that are going to look through that feedback and say like, okay, well this this worked, this didn't work, and then bring those changes to the game thanks to your feedback. So, guys, uh, thank you for going in detail and all of the stuff, and shout out to Max who recorded all those videos for this segment. Um, and, yeah, thank you again.